Within base phase two, I like to incorporate the 80-20 rule. You know, we've seen it all around. It applies to so many facets of our life. Uh, depends on what books you read. But you have 20% of hard training and 80% aerobic base phase kind of training. So the 20%, like how do you apply this, Matt? I get a lot of questions. Is this 80-20 per session? Is this 80-20 per week? per month is this 80 20 by a time by a heart rate like by distance what like how do you see this 80 20 being applied within a plan yeah i think um 20 going hard 20 percent of the time is a lot so when i see 80 20 i'm thinking wow someone can go hard 20 percent of the time that they're spending training if you're spending 10 hours a week you're you know that's two hours of going hard in a week so I generally start to think of this as sessions, right? So if we have 10 sessions, maybe two of them will be hard, not going hard 20% of the time. So that's the way I see it. Yeah, like in our analyzing training module, we went through the fundamental, like basic five pillars of analysis. And that's kind of where I start here as I go 80, 20, like you said, 10 hours of training, two hours is probably going to be dedicated to a specific workout. You know, where you've got eight hours is some kind of aerobic base phase training like targeted aerobic development and then you've got two hours of a session within that session who knows how many intervals you have or how like much time or distance is made up of actual high intensity stuff then from there you know start in the deep dive start in the deep dive of the analysis and go all right across a week how much time did we spend in our different power zones heart rate zones that kind of thing and we can start to see Generally, I'll just try and check that we have 80% of, or approximately 80% of our time during training is spent in zone one and two heart rate. And that's kind of like the next step on. And that's how I use it as well, Matt. So it's not, it's definitely not like you're allowed to do 20% hard each session, which often a lot of people see that as. Um, uh, it's, yeah. it's more like a very... A lot of when I do a presentation similar to this, it's called Introduction to Distance Running or like Endurance Sports. I talk about this and it's a question I get a lot, like how how much can I do? Because everyone loves to loves to thrash themselves. Yeah. It's and like the so, coolest thing. Like it's a yeah, good like, feel, so you feel like you're working hard. If you give them if you give yourself twenty percent rain within a workout, by the time you know you're doing a 30, 45 minute session. By the time you you have the heart rate slow component, you get the bread, you get the media session. You can go as hard, almost as hard as you want, and then you burn out and chill out for for the final 10, 15 minutes of, of your workout. There you go, eighty twenty. Um, so it's not that. <laughs> no, definitely not. Like we don't go hard uh, every day. No way, that would be impossible. I think really the, what this reinforces is this reinforces an entire training plan. And it says 80% of our sessions should have been really, really easy. And if there were more sessions than that going hard, um, we could have done better because we need to focus on developing our aerobic system. And we don't do that when we're going hard. Part of doing this is around, if we're looking at, you know, in Training Peaks, the performance management chart, we can look at the ATL or acute training load. And that's going to give us an indication of how much load an athlete is taking on in about a seven day window. And when you're in the base phase, you're coming off of not a lot of hard training, not a lot of competition, and your cap capability or capacity to absorb like hard training and a large short term training load or acute training load is not what it is at the end of a base phase or even a build phase, race specific phase, race season however you want to, whatever you want to call it. And so that's just something to be mindful of as well. All right, so here's my pro tip. So my pro tip is to look at time and zones, heart rate or power or pace, depending on what your main predominant measure is, and just look at the percentage contribution across a week of training. And that way you can see what percentage time they spent above zone two. So that can be a quick way to check your 80-20 rule. Uh, I've never seen this graph before. I like that actually. So you can just look across. So you're looking across the last four weeks. And you're saying how much of this time was spent basically going easy. And it looks like 
most of it. That's right. Yep, okay. super simple one to do um, within the within the athlete dashboard. Dr. Matt and I started the Performance Advantage podcast to help runners, riders, and outdoor competitors integrate sports science more effectively into their training and racing. So over the last few years, Dr. Will and I have covered topics like the lactate threshold, training zones, power meters, and fatigue. Now we're condensing these popular and misunderstood topics into practical courses. Our courses take our same podcasting style approach to learning and education, and we break it down into bite-sized chunks that you can digest either all at once or as practical little resources to use as and when you need them. So the biggest difference between our course and any other course you might have taken is that we don't lecture you. It's a conversation between Will and I and we're explaining complex sports science principles in an easy to understand manner. Yeah, we also integrate like how we use them on the regular. Our courses come with a certificate of completion as well as a lot of takeaway resources such as training plans, scientific articles and quizzes that you can do to check your progress along the way. Our sports science courses are available now. Register on performanceadvantagepodcast.com for immediate access.